All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast brought to you by Aura Ring. Uh, we are going to talk about stage one. Cue our old friend Alain to help us with the pronunciation. The Tour 2020, stage one. Nice moyen pays to Nice. Nice moyen pays to Nice. That was pretty good. I love it. it and, and it was as predicted, total carnage. Before we get to that, and before we get to our special guest, who's who's agreed to join us quite a few times uh, the next three weeks, former Tour de France champ Andy Schleck. A um, little bit of business, as I said, the show is presented to you by Aura Ring. This I talk about it all the time. Love the company so much. We actually invested in it. Um, it it is was initially a sleep tracker, and George could probably speak to how bad. He slept last night uh, looking at his data on his app. Uh, I personally blame the fact that he had cauliflower rice for dinner. Uh, I, I had lamb chops and potatoes gratin, and he, had, he ordered cauliflower rice. Right, regime starts uh, <laughs> yesterday. I got to get ready for this big race we're doing. Uh, it's, uh, that's just so lame. We go, I take you to a nice dinner, and he ordered cauliflower rice. And his sleep data... Proved it didn't work for him. Uh, we talked about it yesterday, too. Just some of the stuff. I mean, the, the, the device is, is, is just damn near as accurate as an ECG. Um, obviously, um, and on core temp, respiratory rate, all of these key data points and metrics. Um, really the smartest device on the market. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I study it every day. I get my sleep score, readiness score, activity score. Uh, head on over to AuraRing.com. And jump on. Go get, Just start sending us screenshots of your sleep data and your readiness score, people. I want to see, I challenge everybody to send us the highest readiness score. Okay? We well, can all play that game. And what is yours? Just to give them a ballpark? I don't want to talk about mine right now because <laughs> I had the lamb chops and a couple <laughs> glasses of wine. Gotcha. Uh, today's show also brought to you by PowerDot. Uh, smart, sm smart muscle simulator. It's not, and it is completely next level. They took the recovery and pain relief benefits of muscle stem, e-stem, and created this sleek, modern, easy to use device that connects via Bluetooth to your smartphone. Now this is cool. Last month they added what they call smart recovery, right? We all want to be smart, which is compatible with Strava and Apple Health, which is big time. So it automatically recognizes what you've done for activity or fitness or workout for the day, and basically spits out what you need to do for recovery. So. It's and also too. I don't know if y'all can hear the rain. It's actually finally raining here in Aspen, Colorado, just like it was raining in Nice. So I don't know. George is probably going to take a nap and not do much activity today. Uh, I was going to go play golf. Um, so I'm going to need a little help tonight with the low back. 20% uh, off for our listeners. Go to powerdot.com/slash/the-move and use the code the move for those of you watching the yes. video, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, you can hold up your camera and scan the flow code. So this is, this is new and exciting. This, uh, a buddy of mine created this company, Tim Armstrong, called Flow Code. And so they sent us over these cool codes. Just hold your camera up there, and it just, it's just super easy. Takes you right there. Uh, last one here for a bit. Athletic Brewing also uh, helping support the show today. You know, I know, and this is kind of cool for me, because uh, in anticipation of, of being here and wanting to get fitter and kick George's ass, I cut out alcohol for like three months. And, and lo and behold, these two guys, Bill and John, come along, both big cyclists, by the way, uh, and they've made, you know, in their opinion, you know, non-alcoholic beer, alcohol-free beer, was just lame. And Let so me tell you what, real quick, sorry to interrupt, uh, that was the, the, the crankiest I've ever seen Mr. Lance Armstrong during that 90-day alcohol <laughs> hiatus, so I am particularly happy that you're having a couple glasses of wine with us now. Wow. <laughs> yep. And... I don't even know where to go with that. Um, but this stuff, it was, it was, I discovered it during my period here where I was just cleaning up things. You know, COVID hit, and I was like, all right, this is, um, times are crazy. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to clean it up. And so, lo and behold, Athletic Brewing comes along, only 50 to 70 calories per can. Uh, the other cool thing is they have this two for trails program. So they donate 2% of all sales dollars to maintaining trails and parks that are often underserved by government budget shortfalls. So as we know around here, I mean, it, the, the, you know, we, we take trails and, and our parks for granted. They don't just appear and stay maintained and, and be beautiful for us. So uh, help support these guys so they can help support other people. Go to athleticbrewing.com.
themove.com, discount code themove25, and they do sell beer online, athleticbrewing.com. Uh, last thing before we get to our special guest, because he's got to run off and, and be the hero and, and, the, and the baby kisser that he is, Andy Schleck, uh, we have a new media partner this year. So uh, big, big thanks to Outside Magazine for being our media partner for so long. Uh, this year, a uh, new media partner in Velo News and the entire Pocket Outdoor Media Group. Um, head on over to velonews.com slash active pass to get your active pass, which is an, an all-inclusive pass to all of their uh, their entire digital media platform, which includes obviously Velo News, Triathlete, Women's Running, Yoga Journal, Clean Eating, uh, Ski Magazine, the whole Warren Miller catalog. Just a, you know, it's just, you know, for, for, for the active pass, you get access to all this. So head on over to velonews.com slash active pass. And thanks to Velo News uh, for hopping on board with the move. All right, let's talk, uh, let's bring in Andy because. Andy, I'm sure you, well, you're the one who told us what the weather forecast was going to be like, and it didn't disappoint. And, and those roads, as, as we said yesterday, they're just, they're twisty, they're turny, and, 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 and the grease accumulates over months. And, and lo and behold, it rains on the first stage of the Tour de France. What was it like watching just the carnage that we saw on TV? Well, um, honestly, I was really happy. I, I, I'm not the ride anymore um, today. You know, it, it actually didn't rain for two and a half months here. Uh, I spoke with some local guys, and even today, it started a little bit in the morning, and then the, the, you know the weather forecast in Europe, uh, you know it as well. You know, never, never, never it's never right. Um, yeah, and then you know we go into the into the first climb, and it starts like massive raining, and and. Uh, you know, in the car, I mean, it wasn't really cold, you know, it was like uh, 19 degrees Celsius uh, still, you know, uh, in the climbs. So not, not very cold, but the road really was really slippery. I haven't seen it before, not even in, in my career. Uh, the cars, we barely could hold the cars on, on the road. Um, so, yeah, uh, there was even like discussions uh, within uh, Radio Tour that they want to neutralize the race completely from the, uh, from the organization, organization side. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was obviously bodies everywhere. Uh, it was not a real race, and not a real uh, nice start of the of the tour. Obviously, we saw them racing the last 15, 20 k's, but uh, that was when we went to the lower part to Nice again. Uh, really, in the in in the back country in the climbs, there it was um, it was not a nice place to be on the bike. Did you uh, and did you talk to any of the riders beforehand? I'm sure that they saw the um, incoming weather forecast. I'm, I mean, add on the first stage of the Tour de France being in Nice with super windy roads and the rain being a possibility. I'm sure there were super, some, some super nervous guys, and you saw it on the start line and even in the neutral section that there was guys really nervous already. What, did you talk to anybody before the start? Yeah, um, I talked to a few guys yesterday, which I just met on the road because we don't have with the corona, we don't have real access you know, to go to the team buses and then um, I will, you know, some of I could go there, but then we can't take guests, uh, so it doesn't really make sense to go there uh, uh, for myself. But yeah, they it was like kind of unknown. Huh? This uh, is uh, quite new uh, to the tour, even we had like stages, you know, where uh, it wasn't the time trial the, the first day, but nobody really, really knew what was going on today uh, in forehand. Um, you could see, you know, that riders, you know, uh, were hot, you know, to get the, the polka dot jersey, you know, score some points uh, for the green jerseys uh, left and right and you know the chance was quite open for, for a lot of people uh, in forehand so I expected like you know it, it was only like 156 or 154 kilometers so the riders expected like you know really really tough stage because even we didn't climb that much you know the windy roads uh, in the back uh, in the back country of Nice you know, you do the corners and, you know, it's a lot of these, you know, 90 degrees turns and 180 degrees turns, you know, it's always like single line normally when it's dry, you know, and always like really tough, you know, high power accelerations after the corners. Um, yeah, but it turned out to be, you know, a shitty day, uh, a lot of crashes and, you know, somehow like we saw uh, neutralized by the peloton themselves with one exception. And we saw that. We saw the what, what to me was we, we would call a gentleman's agreement. Just everybody just chill. There's too many crashes. It's not worth it. It's the first day of the tour. You know, a lot of these uh, you saw Tony Martin uh, signaling, you know, his hands up, neutral, neutral. Uh, you know, obviously he has a couple of GC favorites, a bunch of other teams. And so it's in their interest just to say, all right, let's just 
just get get through this slick stuff and then you boys sprint and we'll get on to today too and then and then you saw team astana which clearly had a, a different idea uh, i'm not saying they're not gentlemen but uh you know um and and the consequences were a crazy crash from lopez which looked like he was going to keep it up until it just he ran out of road and then <laughs> ran into a sign and, and, and i heard on on tv broke his bike in two like you just snapped mm. the bike in two pieces yeah, it, it, it was a good example that you really, uh, on, on that crash, you really could see like how slippery the road was because he, he doesn't slow down. He starts sliding and slides and slides and slides like like on ice. He doesn't slow down. And and actually, you know, um, after, you know, there was a, was a kind of a funny crash because he didn't hurt himself. But uh, honestly, you know, these roads, you, I mean, you guys train there, you especially, yeah, uh, Lance, you know, the roads, you know, there's, you know, if it's, five meters further down, you know, there's not a pole who holds him, you know, he, he goes down and we see a crash similar to, to, to Remco, you know, um, it goes far down. I, I checked it out and, and yeah, um, it was a gentleman agreement. We had it in the past. Um, I benefit one year out of it. You two lands, I believe in, in spa, uh, when there was, uh, also like soap or oil on the roads, uh, where the, the peloton was neutralized and it was nice to see. Um, somehow, you know, everybody, all the cyclists go through a difficult year. Uh, this year, nobody, you know, have done a lot of races and you can you can feel the tension. You know, that the riders want results. The riders, some run out of contracts, some teams, you know, McLaren uh, stops next year. So they don't really know uh, uh, where to go or if Bahrain can back it up themselves. And, and, and this is a chance, you know, you win today, you don't have to worry about or you do about next year's contract anymore. And, and still, you know, um, that you could see that the whole peloton was united and actually stronger than the organization uh, themselves today because they couldn't take, uh, take or they didn't dare to take a decision. So, you know, I, I like that kind of stuff. I like to see the, the riders uh, reunited and together, you know, and it was quite clear that they, uh, did, this doesn't make any sense, you know, to, to, to race down uh, uh, that downhill. Um, yeah, at Stana didn't agree. Uh, like a lot of times they don't agree uh, with right. things and right. yeah it yeah. was instant karma I mean they started going quick and then you know the main guy almost you know crashed out of the tour uh, uh, quite st but then they agreed after that so that was of nice course. to see as well so Andy we didn't have you on yesterday but uh, I just before we let you go what because we all yesterday ourselves and Johan Bruniel picked uh, our, our favorite for the overall I'm, I'm just curious who you think and and obviously, uh, I guess for all of our picks, nothing was affected today. But who who's your pick to win the tour? I mean, there's one guy who I can see who who really progressed even from 19 to 20. You know, with no with basically no base kilometers, and even I saw today he was really confident. The it's, it's a bit more Roglic, um, which I think. For now, he is my big favorite because if I see the previous races, he he's up there, you know. Um, and many people say he can't maintain three weeks, but I believe he can. Um, you know, he looks like a real uh, he had like a real good impression. He's just looking his face and you know, really concentrated. He got the right team around him, so I would give him five stars. And then uh, Egan Bernal, I'm not. 100% convinced if he can pull it off again because it's, uh, it's the first time where he goes into a tour as a, as a lone leader uh, of the team. Last year he had the backup plan or can be or, you know, uh, which was Gary Thomas. Uh, and he really was on the race leader for five days of the stage 2019. So now it's a complete different different scenario. And he's like, you know, somehow the king of Colombia at the moment. And, yeah. you know, now riding in the rain in Nice, uh, I'm not sure if he... He will digest, uh, you know, this stage is good. So we'll see. Uh, Pinot crashed today. It's fine. And I pick Roglic, uh, Pinot for second, and uh, Bernal for for third. Huh. Yeah, that's All my right. pick. Okay. I like it. We didn't even, we, that you, well, we didn't give a podium, so you just gave us something to, to shoot for. Um, but with most, or Johan and I had Roglic. Uh, George wanted to pick him too, but he didn't want to be like us. Uh, he wanted to be different and so he picked Dumoulin but uh, nonetheless I, I, I'm with you and so uh, be safe over there and uh, uh, thanks for thanks for jumping on 
No worries, guys. Thanks yeah. uh, for having me on the show. If I have anything interesting to report or some insights, I will let you know you, uh, ASP. You, you know Thank where you, to send that. You, the inside scoop comes to the move Yep. every time. <laughs> That's good. I will uh, I will be your spy in the Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. But guys, thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. See you, buddy. Bye. So we got to talk about Alexander Kristoff, uh, the Norwegian. Great day for the Scandinavians, first and second. Um, eighth tour. What, fourth stage win, first yellow jersey. Nobody picked him. I yeah, mean, you, had, George's pick obviously had, had, had a crash, and so perhaps that took a little sting out. Uh, I picked Peter Sagan. George uh, was having a heyday over here, just reminding or showing me how he had no power and just could not, had a perfect line. Yeah. Sagan, but just couldn't come through. He had a perfect line for the sprint, and Alexander just outpowered him. But even Alexander said in the interview that he's had a terrible start to the season. Um, and just four days ago, he crashed on his head in the European Championship. So. He, uh, I think even he was pretty surprised with the win, but uh, he won uh, quite clearly, I mean, by bike length and had a great line. Didn't have much help or even any help uh, coming up to the finish, so it was quite impressive to see what he did today. Well, again, a big, another big crash. Lots of crashes today, uh, but a b fairly big one just under the 3K banner, which, of course, the rules in, in cycling now allow that any crash uh, that happens within 3K to go which many would argue should actually be even farther out from, from the finish line. But within 3K, you get the same time. So we saw some favorites go down there. Pino went down there. But that, that changes the, um, the dynamics of the sprint. I mean, I don't know what, what lead out guys were stuck there. But, I mean, it, you well, know. Not only that, I think it was a big point wh how the riders did finally come together. I mean, imagine if they actually raced up that final climb and down the descent, more importantly. It would have been complete chaos and carnage. And you'd hate to see on stage one, lose a favorite of the race, which was a clear possibility if they did race. So I was really happy to see all the teams sort of come together. I'm sure there were a lot of directors in the back talking and, uh, you know, make a, a big Peloton decision to neutralize the race. There was no use of, well, it just would have been crazy dangerous for them to race up and down that last mountain. I was curious, does that uh, decision to neutralize things, does that come from the directors communicating to each other and kind of go it's down to the riders the, or is it usually above. the riders up? Yeah. I would say all the above, the, the team leaders are talking. You saw what happened with Ostana. I mean, Jumbo Visma was doing a hard pace. Uh, we don't know why either to keep Primos and Demolon in the front or to put more time on Sivakov, who is also a danger for the GC. Then they decided to neutralize the race. And then Astana is like, wait, wait a second. Why do you get to decide? They go to the front. They crash instantly. And then it's a whole you know, Peloton decision like this is getting crazy. We need to slow down and uh, ride to the finish state. I think it takes a couple of the, you know, the older guys. I mean, like Tony Martin. I mean, God, George and I, were, we raced with Tony Martin. This boy's been around a minute. So the, the, the Peloton, a guy like him, they're going to defer to him. And if he, you know, talks with a couple other guys and says, this is nuts. Like, let's all, let's not um, hurt ourselves or, or, or jeopardize our, our GC guys. Let's just chill. Like, it, it, and you saw, it, and we spoke about this on the preview show, it really doesn't matter how slow you're going. If you catch it just right, yeah. whether it's a patch of oil or, or diesel, or you know the, the road markings, the white stripes, the crosswalks, the center line, you're going down. Like, <laughs> by, by the way, if, if I'm Primos, I am loving having Tony Martin on my team. Did you? If, mm. I don't know if you caught, but he was basically at the front the whole stage today, from kilometer zero to the end. The guy controlled the whole race, kept Primos out of the trouble and Demolon out of the trouble. That's why they call why do you, why do you, do you don't have to listen. The, the Panza you, wagon, the Panza wagon. But Panza you keep wagon. talking about Dumoulin just because you picked him, which I think is cute and great. <laughs> but uh, yes, I mean, and, and he's a dominator. The um, Panza wagon. Do you guys ever recall uh, when it is a because Andy mentioned that you had incidents where it was neutralized and some ding dong takes the opportunity. Do you remember that ever happening? And two, I think we all know this. What are the repercussions? It's, it's nothing within the playbook of repercussions, but it's you, you'd be ousted. I th you? I think that softened over time. The the, the to, at least to me the you know if I go back to my early days and you'd have these, I mean guys were that were just uh, true um, tough guys. You know, and Chippo was probably one of them. He was always during the Giro, especially like piano, piano, mm -hmm. and 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 over time. I mean, if you would have done that back then, they, you would have come back into the Peloton. They would have been throwing food at you, bottles at you. It would have been <laughs> yeah. complete torture. Over time, that softened, and, and you know, they, they might have called you an asshole or something, but it, it was not the treatment that you would have gotten 
uh, in the 90s. Um, now, I mean, what would happen now? I don't know. But, Other, but not worth it <clears throat> for that day of glory. Not worth it. No, I just put just put everybody in, in danger. It wouldn't it yeah. wouldn't have been worth it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was uh, it was it was as expected. I mean, the, 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 like we said yesterday, it just a um, you know, it's a beautiful part of the world is, is if you watch it on TV, you saw. Um, but it's rugged. And back there, it's it's not you know, like I said, it's not a bunch of Rolls Royces and Bentleys. It's it's and so the one thing that I did. So I think it's sort of one thing where one key theme sticks out for me. If you, if we talk about as we did yesterday, the two super teams and Jumbo Visma and Team Ineos, you know, they both ha- between Sivakov and and Bennett, they both they didn't lose them, but those guys are going to be feeling it. Both crashed twice. Both key, key players, uh, certainly in the mountains, for their leaders. And, man, just to start a three-week race on your heels like that. Oh, and, and, and what's to come tomorrow? I mean, tomorrow is basically a big mountain day. Second stage of the tour, all banged up. Uh, it's not, not a great start for them. And as I saw George Bennett uh, chasing back on uh, after the first crash, I, 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 and George and I disagreed on this, and he can uh, talk about his point of view, but as it, he was chasing back on, uh, motor pacing in the rain. I'm already watching that going, okay, that right there, I, I, that's a bad idea to me, but don't get back up there and crash again, right? And he, of course, crashed again. George's point of view, which I understand and respect, is different. Uh, I just thought, just set up. A real, he's got two leaders. It's, it's just don't crash again. Get to the finish line with just one crash. Well, I mean, it's it's like what Johan used to do back in the day when we had Chachi Rubiera and um, um, our other Spanish Heros? Head, Roberto Heros, Sorry. Um, so you, the, the, in, the the rice didn't is not know, good the for the brain and the memory. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the, alt- it's the altitude. I'm still kind of trying to adapt, acclimate to the altitude. But I mean, it's good to have options, even though George Bennett is not their top GC guy. <laughs> Wait, what's gonna, what is we're, what we're is going go on? We're going to go to that in a second. It's good to have options. <laughs> I'm actually. Well, let's go. Let's address this real quick. Mark, put that back on. Since you brought up the cauliflower rice, our boy McGinty sent me this picture. I don't know. Last week, is that? A, are you wearing a fanny pack? Uh, you know what? Is it, that a fanny pack? It, it, the answer is yes. And uh, and I'll raise. The man you. is wearing a fanny pack. Exactly. I carry all my shit in there. I'm very I've confused. Got, I've got all my stuff. Very and, disturbed by this. And whole those picture. are those are old school Apple cables coming out. So I've got it rigged up. So I got my phone in there. The cables. This, Listeners, this is what we call not profi, right there, <laughs> not profi. No, but uh, the cable runs up through the shirt, and see, I've got the one ear thing ready to go. If somebody calls, like George, if you call me and need some emotional support, I'm ready. Okay, I'm not fumbling for my phone or nothing. I can answer it right there. This, by the way, while you're ragging on me and, and being mean, I was, and you even cut my daughter out of the picture. So this is, uh, I'm, dro- I'm dro- McGinty did that. McGinty I'm dropping did that. McGinty. What the? I, I'm, I'm. Dropping Grace off at CU. This is a very emotional moment for me. I didn't want to struggle for grabbing things. Oh, this is recent. This no, was recent, this no. was several days ago. I posted oh, that on man. Instagram. And I and by the way, you're not the only one to give me shit for wearing a fanny pack. And by the way, fuck y'all, y'all. I don't care. <laughs> it is so convenient. You here's the thing. You wear a fanny pack one day, you'll wear it forever. <laughs> really? It's awesome. I'm not going to let this slip through the show without bringing it up because you were giving George a hard time about having his cauliflower rice dinner. And the thing that happened after that, we're at dinner and you're giving him grief after he ordered. The moment after that was priceless. Oh, Explain that, what happened, that was, that was priceless. You don't even remember. I, I, I'm like, well, I, it couldn't I, have been that priceless. It was, I don't oh, remember. I thank you for reminding me. Well, you know, we've all been listening, hopefully listening to our shows over the last few months and Lance talking about how fit he is, working out biking getting super shredded <laughs> and he's like this is the, the our waiter super nice guy what was his name carlos <laughs> very nice guy how about anyway, all, how he's about like, ollie oh no it wasn't ollie it was the other guy the guy uh, it, you go it, to the, he's like this is the guy i go to the gym with how's it going we go See to the same the gym, gym. He goes, yeah i haven't seen you in a long time where you been <laughs> it was so great <laughs> It, you know, you know what? You guys can ha- you all do this show. I'm going to go play golf and uh, in the rain. I, I'd rather play golf in the rain than take this abuse. But he's right. I don't go. I go to the gym in the winter when it's this place is covered in snow. I go to the gym in the summer. It's dry. The trails are open. I'm outside, baby. So I, <laughs> you'll it. see, Hinkapi. You just you'll see when you come across me on the bike next time. All I right. promise you. 
Let me take care of a little business. Today's show also brought to you by Magic Spoon. This is, look, we all as endurance athletes, fans of endurance sports, we love cereal, right? Oh, it's, it's kind of the perfect breakfast food if you're gonna go out for a three or four hour bike ride. I grew up eating cereal, uh, but this is different. This is uh, n no carbs, no sugar, totally healthy. Uh, actually zero grams of sugar, 11 grams of protein, three net grams of carbs, so very little. Um, bunch of different flavors, tastes amazing. Also, too, when your kids just want to go eat all this crap that our kids eat, like what are your your kids? They, they they're eat? eating this now. My buddy Jesse Itzler, who is just the man. Have you seen his challenges on Instagram? Where he he's always doing he wants something to physical. he wants to pay the CEO of Kellogg's a hundred thousand dollars to do an interview and ask him like, why are you putting all this stuff? Ooh. Anyways, this is the answer. Yeah, where was this when I was a kid? This in well, the in even better is now that uh, you know the father of five kids. This is a perfect solution. My kids, they inhale Magic Spoon. Go to magicspoon.com slash the move. Promo code is the move. Last one of the day, as we had in, in, uh, in the best of seven, uh, Ventum. I've been loving this road bike. Uh, and in fact, I cannot wait to get it out there so George sees the back end of it. Uh, it, it is... Um, Direct to consumer, it is light, it is fast, and you, as you will see, George, or as you won't see, there's no cables anywhere. Uh, custom build options, you can even get the WeDo paint scheme, as our friend Mr. McGinty got. I mean, I hooked you up with the WeDo paint scheme on my Ventum, and you send around pictures of me with a <laughs> fanny pack on? That is, what kind of fucking friend is that? That is not nice. It's a good friend to me. Hand assembled in the US, shipped from their headquarters in Utah. And it shows up like, I don't know how, what kind of kabuki stuff they put on this. You just take it out of the box and it's basically ready to ride. I, I don't know how people figured that out. Uh, head on over uh, to VentumRacing.com slash The Move. 20% off any purchase until the end of October. The Move is the podcast desk app. Can I go back to why I oh, thought no. George Bennett uh, oh, okay. was, yeah. was asked to chase back on? before I was distracted by the, the fanny pack episode, which I was very pleased to address. Um, I feel like this first week is so hard, uh, tomorrow stage, and then going into the Massif Central. I know that Johan would be thinking the same thing. Like there's gonna be big, big huge breakaways going in the Massif Central, and you'd want a guy like George Bennett in there to have representation to a super strong guy that could go a long way in the GC. Okay and take a lot of pressure off of Team, Uni, uh, team uh, Jumbo Visma to have to chase these big breakaways down. That's okay. why they wanted right. them back to be on the same time as the leaders. Totally agree. It, but you have to look at your, at your whole card, okay? Because the risk of, of him crashing again, which he did, and I think he got out of it okay, but if he were to get hurt, you'll lose him totally. I would say they have other options to do that. Sepp Kuss can go do that, or even Dumoulin can do that. The, the, the crash was 3K to go in a wide, straight road. I mean, that, was, uh, th that should not have happened. Uh, so they weren't thinking that. Oh, okay. His, his well, last it shouldn't crash. Have, you, George is right, because that crash shouldn't have happened. <laughs> but I, no, I totally see, and I, do, and I do agree with you that Johan would have thought the same way, and he'll speak to it on his show after this. But, yeah, I mean, they want, they want to keep all their options open, but I just, I don't know if I'm, even if I'm him, I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to chill, get to the finish. It's going to be sunny tomorrow. And, and, and just get back into it. So, Do you guys think with this course, this shaky, horrendous first day, a tough day, day two, um, we might see more abandons in the Tour de France than... On the second day? Ever. No, just Overall. in general. This, oh, yeah. And COVID oh, and God, I mean, and, you consider, it, you know, and we're still getting, we spoke about this yesterday, so now we're still getting other reports about what the protocol will be. Mm -hmm. If it's, and as we saw last night, as, as, as somebody snuck us the communique, uh, is it now, if any two people, uh, part of the entire team test positive, the whole team goes home? I mean, that, that, that counts as a dropout. Yeah, I mean, the rate of attrition could be, um, it could be very high. I think that's safe to say. Let's take it day by day. Tomorrow's a much, much harder day, but it looks like the weather's gonna be better. They got through the first stage, there's tomorrow, is there's some category, category one, two category one climbs. So yeah. there's going to be huge groups of gr groupettos off the back that form together and get to the finish line. 
that would be, you know, if they're on their own, it's going to be a major problem. But in big groups, they'll make it to the finish. So and these are tomorrow will be less stressful. for These, these are guys. great climbing. Mean, these were my roads, man. This is where I spent hours and hours, yep. years of my life training. Uh, the Colmian is a great climb. Uh, that's the first big one. It's just long. It's not hard. It's just long. Uh, actually, it, it, it's funny. It ends up at a ski. The summit is at a ski resort. So if you think you could probably uh, ski in the morning and come down and have rosé lunch on, on the Cote d'Azur in the afternoon if you wanted. Uh, but the next climb, the Torini, is twisty and tough. And so I don't I mean, I, I don't think this to me, at least I, this is not a question of GC. I think all the GC guys are fine. The big question is. Who can get over those climbs and then make it to the finish and win and win the stage? Whether that's Peter Sagan, Wild Van Art, et cetera, et cetera. Johan, I, I, uh, just FYI, he's picking his favorite. Of course, he's picking a Belgian. He's picking Wild Van Art. Um, but that's my, to me, that's the question. Like, if if they go hard, who can make it over? Not only that, there'll be there'll be huge breakaways from the start tomorrow. Uh, you'd think because it's just such a Hard day. It's slightly uphill the whole first start part of the stage. So it's going to be very, very aggressive. Guys are going to want to get up the road, get ahead of the the main guys for these climbs. So I think it's going to be another jam packed action day. And we'll see how these the people who did hit the deck. We'll see how that you'll see immediately how yep. they recover. I mean, it, whether it's Sivakov or Bennett or Pino or Pino, you're yep. going to find out real fast uh, how, how they've recovered or, or what that impact or the or the what are you pulling up? I, I, I just wanted to. Break this, this is, out before we. I, I, did I wake? Did I, what, did something happen? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I here. I, I thought. The, I, I'm confused. I, this is like make fun of Lance. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a gift. But I, oh, a gift. This is a gift. Oh, okay. Is this your surprise? You teased. This out? is my surprise. Okay, okay. I thought you were pulling up something, really humiliating. No, no, no. I think you're gonna like this because. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went back and re-listened to that sit-down you did with Bob Roll, mm -hmm. which is great. And I highly recommend people go through the archives and listen to it. In fact, you and Bob should sit down every year and do that. I love it. Something you brought up, and you've mentioned this is pretty much the tour of southern France, right? Uh, when you were talking to Bob and you were talking about back in the day living in Nice and you know learning the roads and how challenging it was to get around, we didn't have the technology, all those things. You used to use one of these to get around, so I got oh, you one. Wow, nice. See, this was this was before uh, you know all the fancy Google Earth and Apple Maps and Waze and everything. This was, and I would carry this, so I had a big Ziploc. Don't tell Anna; she's she won't let us have any plastic in the house. <laughs> but uh, I would keep it. Oh my God, brand new. This That's is awesome. holy moly. Yeah, this is uh, well, and by not the brand way, new. It's old, but it. But so Michelin, of course, makes. They're in a lot of funky. Like they make tires, but then they like rate restaurants, and then they make maps. <laughs> like what a company! But I would carry this in my back pocket, and and I and I, it was a sort of a challenge to me to find uh, all the roads possible. And and if if you don't know this, so and you, when you look at the map, you'll see it. So in France, uh, the roads are categorized by letters. So A is a big road, B is smaller, C is small. And if you could get a D road, which was a departmental, like if it was D125, you knew you were basically going to be in an alleyway or a cart path or a trail, but it was a road and it was on the map. Yellow road, so, right? So I was just looking at this going, give me the D road. No cars, fucking beautiful, perfect, all D, all departmental roads. But this JB... You know, this actually makes up for all the shit that everybody gave me today, whether it be <laughs> McGinty, whether, whether it be George. W w this, this is something else. Man. It even has Corsica on there. Huh. Thank you, brother. How did <laughs> sure. you... But by the way, where do you buy something like this? eBay, man. eBay. eBay. It came over from, awesome. from Europe. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm touched. And, and unused. It was still in the, the wrapper. I'm touched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Sure. Um, so look, we're stage two tomorrow. This is uh, again, weather looks better. Tough day. Um, all, nothing's changed for us. This is going to be the weirdest tour ever. Uh, Picks, huh? Picks. I make party. I make party. <laughs> I make party. Tomorrow? I pick. I pick Peter's gun. He yeah. says, "Did you see his interview today on TV?" He said, "This is why I'm here." <laughs> they were like, "Do you want to win?" Or they said something like, "Do you? Would you like to win?" He's like, "This is why I'm here." 
<laughs> right. That's Dad. pretty simple. Right. Why I'm here to he win. There? Okay. That's you know what? That I like that answer. I'll take that. I, I I'm sticking with him. I'm sticking with him. I got um I'm thinking how the leap gonna mm. go in that last climb and just bomb that descent and uh, roll it into Nice. Ooh. That that's 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 by the way, I, and, and I didn't know they did this either, so that you know the whole the Peloton is transitioned to disc brakes. And, and they don't have classic quick releases. And so I, I'd never seen this before. I don't know what I've been doing, but uh, Alaphilippe had a front flat or a front wheel mechanic. Oh, they couldn't get the wheel. And the mechanic comes out yeah. and George's like, oh, he's got the drill. Yeah. So they got this drill with an Allen head or an Allen wrench head on it or something. And he's just, it's like NASCAR or, or, <laughs> F1, or car yeah. racing. It's, I was yeah. like, that is sick. I did notice the UAE was not on disc brakes, which on daylight today. Oh, you'd, daylight today. You'd, you'd want to be on. Look, yeah. Clearly didn't matter I though they won. You still got to the finish line. But more importantly, the drill didn't work. He still ended up switching bikes. I know, but it's still cool. <laughs> that, when that drill came out, I was like, all right, that's sick. That's sick. <laughs> that was cool. Um, we should mention if you want to get a really good tactical look at what's happening tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, Johan will be joining us. But joining us, and it's audio only, so it'll be on the 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 move feed wherever yep. you get your podcasts, and it'll come out just a couple hours after this comes out. But, yep. Uh, You'll get a good look at tomorrow from and it's and, and he he you know it's it, when we saw this happen yesterday literally we wrapped this show every 30 minutes there's just new information coming mm -hmm. out about the race or yeah. the, especially now with covid so johan you know he's just sitting in front of the computer right now just just pulling all the intel he can and and that's you know that's i mean obviously he is who he is but uh he, he tends to have some good scoop mm -hmm. i think Absolutely. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the move. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, by the way, first, and the, I read this today, it's the, they haven't had a big mountain stage this early in the tour in 41 years. Hmm. 41 years. You got to go back to the whatever, 70s maybe, um, before the into, you know, last time they did this. So uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all tomorrow. And uh, we'll be up right now. You're watching. <laughs>